Okay, True Crime fans, thank you for tuning in. If you love true crime and you love knowledge, tune in with me every Wednesday to get you through that hump in the week. This is the sickest, the most savage true crime online. So if you're a true crime fan, this is the place to be. Please think about like and share and subscribing. Today we are looking at the case of Carol Cott, a teenage psychopath nicknamed the Vampire of Krakow. Thank you for tuning in. Carol Cott was born on the 18th of December 1946. He was an archetypal, typical psychopath. His entire childhood and early teen years were filled with aberrant and strange behaviour. He collected knives. He would actually go to slaughterhouses and ask for fresh blood, drink the blood. He always wanted to be a killer and fantasised about being a killer. His early behaviour was so disturbing that people at the slaughterhouses would actually refuse to speak to him. He would turn up at abattoirs to watch the animals being killed. He tortured animals. He was an arsonist. He was an early arsonist and he was sentenced to death when he was only 21. This is the unbelievably savage case of Carol Cott, the vampire of Krakow. The 21st of September 1964, Carol Cott put his long-held fantasies into action. He stalked a Helene Velgen in church. He actually deliberately targeted elderly women for his first victims, knowing that they would be more vulnerable. His entire life he had fantasised about killing, he'd wanted to be a killer, he tortured his sister's cats, he tortured animals, he went to abattoirs for his own entertainment to watch the animals being slaughtered. Carol Cott was a deeply disturbed young man with definite signs of psychopathy. He stalked a Helene Velgen who was 48 into church and actually stabbed her through the shoulder blades, frenziedly stabbing her over and over again. Luckily, he was unsuccessful. He then stalked a Francesca Lindowska, who was 78. Also, he stalked her getting off a tram. He pulled his knife, one of many that he collected, and stabbed her repeatedly over and over again, both women would survive these attacks and they would go on to dis give a very good description of Carol Cott to the police. At the time of these first attacks, he was just 19 years old. Six days later, he stabbed a Marie Pilcher, 66, from behind, frenziedly attacking her over and over again. She unfortunately died, but Carol Cott actually went to the hospital to inquire about his victim, a pattern of behaviour he would repeat. After a lull of 17 months, the attacks began to occur again. On the 13th of February 1966, he fatally stabbed an 11-year-old boy and he, he went into frenzied overkill. He stabbed this boy over and over again. Six days later, the 14th of April 1966, he attacked an eight-year-old girl named Magalosa. He went to a children's tobogganing competition. He'd stalked this eight-year-old girl. Sorry, he stalked this eight-year-old girl and frenziedly stabbed her over and over again. Now, during the break between his attacks, Carol Cott tried to poison people. So when he was not stabbing people and, you know, setting fire to buildings, he would go on to try and poison people. He would randomly pick a supermarket or a shop. He would take down the products off of the shelves, unscrew the products and fill them with cyanide and arsenic and put them back on the shelves. If anyone became Ill, ill, he would go to the hospital and he would inquire about his victims. He had a habit of hanging around at his crime scenes if anyone got hurt and then asking people what was going on because he was a clean-cut looking 19-year-old kid. 
you know, people didn't think it was strange. It was only later on that the police became suspicious of Carol Cott and started to add up all of his suspicious and evil behaviour. Carol Cott was actually convicted of two counts of murder, ten counts of attempted murder, numerous counts of attempting to poison people and four counts of arson. He, his downfall came when he began to brag to one of his fellow students, a girl called Danuta, about what he had done. He was proud of what he had done and Danuta, bless her heart, she informed the authorities, she told the police and he was arrested on the 1st of June 1966, the day after his secondary school exam. The authorities allowed him to sit that exam knowing that they could use that to say that he was sane and knew what he was doing. So in court, that they could produce his exam to say that he, it, so he couldn't plead insanity. So they allowed him to sit his exam. He got an A grade on his exam. He got perfect marks on his exam and he was arrested the day after. In a police interview, he began to brag to police about everything that he'd done. And when police investigated it, they realised that this was a serial murder case. His trial began on the 3rd of May 1967 and Carol Cott pleaded guilty to two counts of murder, ten counts of attempted murder and four counts of arson. He was sentenced to death by hanging. That was later commuted to life imprisonment and then the year after they reinstated the death penalty. He was executed on the 16th of May 1968. After the hanging, an autopsy was carried out which revealed a huge brain tumour in his brain. However, it's disputed whether or not this would have had an effect on his behaviour. It's clear from his entire life that Carol Cott always showed signs of psychopathy. He was, in fact, an archetypal, typical psychopath. And that is the story of the vampire of Krakow, a 19-year-old who terrorised an entire city. Now... After his death, the death sentence was, they stopped the death sentence a year after Carol Cott's death because he was so young. However, the year after that, the death penalty was reinstated. So that is the story of Carol Cott. Thank you for tuning in with me today. Whatever you do today, make good choices, put yourself first. Thank you for tuning in. This is Filthy Ketchup.